Hello everyone, Nary here from Drinkwing Gaming, so if you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon, today I'm coming at you another Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale, Jesse's Path. So, the last time we left off, our horse Hazel got away, and she was caught by Grace, who is, I believe, the Kelpie, or as I just, I'm just gonna call her Nessie. She's Nessie! She's Nessie, damn it, don't take this from me. Okay, <clears throat> there we go, let's get into it, guys. Grace's expression changes, and I sense she has some sympathy for my horse's plight. Perhaps she'd rather be wild and free. She's feisty. I like it. Feisty like you wouldn't believe. I suppose I should get her back to the farm. If she'll follow you, I'm not quite sure she's interested in where you're leading her. Sometimes we don't have a choice about where we go, or who we go with, do we? I reach for the reins, and Grace, pa and Grace passes them to me after a moment's hesitation. I suppose so. Goodbye, Malcolm. She turns without another word and begins walking toward the water. I wonder at a girl who can both seem so sullen yet confident. What a strange girl. Be seeing you, Grace. Thanks for your help. Tugging Hazel back towards the stable, I think back on what I've heard about the youngest sister, wondering if she isn't just terribly lonely and bored on the farm all day. Best not to overthink it, though. Much is left to be done today, and my mind can't bear any additional burdens. Back at the homestead, my first order of business is to put poor Hazel in a paddock with plenty of space. She seems to tolerate the accommodations well enough, but I keep a weather but I keep a weather eye on her at all times, just in case. The much needed patches for the stable roof keep me busy as the dawn as the day draws on. It's one less thing for Hazel to hold against me at least. Nope. Looks like we got a little bit of a graphical error right there. Well, maybe not, it's right there. Hmm. Weird looks like. Ooh, a little shadow right there or something? Okay, anyway. The sun is already setting when my grandmother calls me back in for supper. I kick myself for losing track of time. A day has passed. I've not eaten and my hands are sore and callous from all the hard work. I wash up, change my clothes, and sit down to enjoy a hearty meal with Agnes. But apparently even a good scrub can't hide my fatigue. Dear, you look exhausted. Did the day's laborers not agree with you? You don't know the half of it. We commiserate about the stubbornness of beasts and talk long into the evening. Eventually we both find ourselves yawning and rest beckons us. It looks as though the bed is calling you, Gran. I am retired now. That you to your evening routine. I wink and tilt my head towards the bottle of scotch by the sink. You know you're welcome to partake in the ritual. Maybe a wee dram. I grab the bottle and glasses and we sip together in silence until Gran denies a refill. I've had my fill. Any more tipsy and I myself will need to be poured into bed. My muscles argue a little as I lift myself out of the chair and protest hard still as Gran gives me a tight embrace. Sleep well, Gran. I'll see you when the rooster crows. Good night, Malcolm. May the fairies only slip you peace-filled dreams. I chuckle, reminded of childhood fairy tales as Agnes retires to her room, and busy my I busy myself with the dishes when I hear a light knock on the door. Who in the world would be calling at this hour? Really uh accentuating that chest there, aren't you? <laughs> Glasses look really cute. Malcolm. Malcolm, is that you? A tall woman stands before me in the cool evening air. She is most definitely the flaxen-haired woman I had noticed at the market today, and my former school teacher. Her face is somber and frozen with worry, but she cracks a faint smile at my appearance. Miss Alana, how are you? I reach out to give her a gentle embrace, so the measure is hardly reciprocated as she nearly pulls away. You remember me? 
Oddly enough, she does not look like she's aged at all since I first saw her in the classroom so long ago. Of course I do. It's nice to see you. You as well. The whole village is thankful to have you back, myself included. You must come in to warm up. It's mighty late to be strolling out this way. She shakes her head and pulls the lapels of her long green gown tightly around her neck. Her piercing eyes stare boldly, almost invasively, into me. No, I shan't be staying long, Malcolm. I came especially to see you. She hesitates and her gold, and her gold hair shines in the moonlight, bringing out the blonde highlights. You know everyone is relieved to your home, safe and sound. Thank you. It continues to be pleasant to hear. It's good to be home. Yes, everyone is pleased, including the McLeod girls. You, you've spoken with them. I take pause at the sudden specificity. Her brow furrows and she rubs her arms for warmth. We've crossed paths since I've returned, I guess. Yes, they are our neighbors after all. Are you sure you don't want to come inside? Concern is written all over her. I would appreciate the warmth more than she would, it seems. I want to ask if she's alright, but instinct guides me otherwise. No, thank you. I just... Yes? You need to know. <clears throat> One second, guys. I need to know what? It's best if you stay away from them. The words take me completely by surprise. It takes me a moment to find my bearings. Why on earth would you say that? Is something wrong? She begins speaking very fast and very concisely, as if rehearsed. Please don't ask me. It's a private matter. What I ought not to even speak about. Just know I'm looking out for everyone's best interests. I'm at a loss for words. This is the side of Miss Alana I'd hoped I'd never see again. As a teacher, she was at once kind, gentle, and stern. Learning came easily through her methods of education. She was joyous and heartfelt in the classroom, and always knew when to raise her voice and chastise her boisterous youthful behavior. But occasionally, for no reason, she would become very serious, very superstitious over the smallest of things, even as a child, and viewed as a strange behavior. And outside of school, well, it was as if she was an entirely different person, a mournful and isolated woman, when she was seen at all. It made life uncomfortable for a child who otherwise adored his normally cheerful teacher. What did she become now? Let's save, let's save. Okay, let's see. What? Ah! Press for more. Let's do it. More! More! Give me more information! Can you share with me why? Are they in danger? What has you so worried? It's not something I can speak aloud, but now please trust me, respect my wishes and those of the girls. I'm overwhelmed with confusion. Is it their wish not to see me? Not exactly. They just, they are not prepared to ask you to stay away. Malcolm, listen to me, please. Look in my eyes. One second, guys. Her eyes are dark with desperation and sadness, even while reflecting the moon's glow. A darkness sweeps over the sky, black as the earl of hell's waistcoat. The bright moon is clouded over. It is because I care for you, and them, and that I've come here tonight. They may seem like harmless girls, but outward appearances can be deceiving. Family secrets run deep. Don't get too close to them. No, you've been asked in earnest. Please stay away from the McLeods. I've never seen such intensity from Miss Alana. Whatever her reasons, she's clearly distressed, so I decide to appease her. Don't worry, I'll respect their space. Thank you for coming by, but now I should really be getting back to. Oh, you've given me such relief, Malcolm. She moves closer, as if to embrace again. I rarely step back, and in doing so I realize I may have offended her. I, no, I must be on my way. I'm sorry, please. Take care of Miss Alana. I hope to catch up with you soon, perhaps in brighter circumstances. I point to the shaded moon. She nods. It is if on cue, the clouds part. Of course, please, give my best to your grandmother. She steps away from the door and demurely waves goodbye. Good night, Malcolm. I watch her as she walks away. Her silhouette shrinks and I can't help but wonder what was on, what has her so distraught. 
Eventually, she veers off the path and deeper into the hill crossing, disappearing among the jagged boulders. I shiver and tell myself it is because of the draft. Inside, I warm myself with one more drink from the now near empty bottle of scotch. I don't realize how tense I am until I reach for the glass. The first sip eases the tension, but not my nerves. Agnes ducks out of her room and believes she can read my concern as I pour myself yet another drink. It's all well. There's someone at the door, dear. I lift my glasses and polish off the whiskey, resolving to put the strange encounter behind me. It was nothing, Gran. Under my breath, I add, Mr. Ghost from the past. Oh dear, that is really strange. Family secrets run deep. And perhaps are some are more deadly than others. Still night, okay. Or, or not, okay. I guess the transition didn't work there. The smell of fresh-baked pastry drifts out of the main room. I come in to find Gran stirring a pot at the stove. Good morning. How did you sleep? I feel like I've already- I feel like I've hardly slept at all. Well, enough, I guess. Something smells good. She points to a basket of muffins on the table. The steam wafts around them as they cool. I baked some fresh treats for the McLeod girls, since they've helped make your reception home so home a warm one. Won't you be a dear and take these over to them? My uncomfortable conversation with Alana is still fresh, although I don't want to worry my grandmother. Still. Gran, have you heard anything, well, odd about the McLeod girls? Odd? What do you mean? The girls. Has anything ever seemed off? Why ever would you ask that? I've known them to be nothing but good. Gran hesitates. But... Malcolm, I've lived a long, full life. This town has a past, secrets that aren't meant to be uncovered. Not everything is as it seems. I'm stupefied. Now Gran is giving me riddles too. It almost sounds like the opening to one of the fairy tales she would read to me as a wee lad. What? What does that mean? Good willing, you'll never have to find out. Quickly now, while the muffins are still warm. Breakfast should be ready soon as you return. Before I know it, I find myself shooed out the door, alone with a basket of muffins and a baker's dozen of questions a baker's dozen of questions in my head. What are Gran and Alana talking about? In all my years I've never noticed anything unusual in this sleepy hamlet, apart from Alana herself. Maybe Agnes is getting superstitious too in her old age. Should I let their superstitions stand in the way of being a good neighbor? Uh uh, uh, uh Wow. What a wealth of choices we have right here. Be a good neighbor or be a good neighbor. Hmm. Let's be a good neighbor. I shove my concerns and tell myself that I can press for some answers on my return. I make it to the McLeod's house in no time. Marion is standing at the door, almost as if she is waiting for me. She waves me over. Good morning, Malcolm. Oh, I'm so glad you decided to visit. The morning rays highlight her cheerful features. Her smile is genuine, but something about it seems unusual, different. Her expression falls as she seems to sense my unease. Goodness, you look like you've seen a ghost. Would you like to come inside? There's tea on the stove. Morning, Marion. No, I can't stay. I just came to drop off these muffins. Compliments of my gran. Is everything all right? I guess the same of you. You look unwell. Marion takes me by the hand. A little concern. The uneasy feeling grows, forming a knot in my stomach. Come inside. We'll get you some tea. No, no buts. She leads me into the house. It looks much the same as I remember it from when I was a kid. The woven rug made by their mother collects dust underneath the table, and the family portrait hanging over the mantel brings back bittersweet memories of their stern father, Owen. It would be a cozy space, except for an unnaturally harsh chill. Is, is, it, is it usually this cold in here? Don't worry, we'll get you warmed up soon. Girls, we have a visitor. I hear Jessie call out from another room. 
Marion, who is it? And they're, she's still wearing the same outfit from yesterday. Okay, okay. Um, girls, how about a change of clothing? She comes into the kitchen with Grace beside her. Jesse is still in her flapper dress, which seems odd for the morning. Yeah, okay, so he noticed it too. Perhaps she just got home from a long evening out. Oh, Malcolm, how are you? All three girls are hovering around me. My knees have become weak and I feel hopeless, like a specimen on display. You look awful. Are you all right? Grace, be nice. Why don't you get the fire going? And... Yep, there goes my alarm. Alright guys, I'm going to leave you right there. That has been a new episode of Changeling Tale, Jesse's Path. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell. And I am still considering all the things you guys said to me. I'm still thinking of doing a playthrough from the start. Um, I'll just put like a disclaimer at the beginning of the video saying like this is not new content or something like that. Like th this is... For those who wish to see the full start of the video, I realize that it'll it'll probably lose some views as some of the more long-time viewers just decide to skip it because it's not anything new. But, you know, I understand. There'll be more new content. Don't worry, guys. And also, I'm thinking that every time I complete one character's playthrough, what I'll do is I shall start a new game. And then after I do a, a playthrough for that game, or, you know, have a run with that character, I shall switch back to one of my older games and do a new run for that character. That way we can keep a cycle of new content going on this channel. So anyway, guys, I love you all. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye!